Hey, Kevin here, top one financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. Want to answer a question that people always ask me, and that is, what do you think is a good stock to invest in? Even though I regularly publish what I think are good stocks, you can find out all the stocks that I like on public because I invest in those. You can also, uh, if you're part of the Investors Toolkit, I give you 20 stocks that I like every single month inside of that course. I'll leave that link below. You definitely want to check it out. But I do today want to provide a list of what I think are some very good starter companies to really build your portfolio around. Now, remember, everybody's goals are different. There's not investing advice, disclaimer, disclaimer. Y'all know the deal. But these are five companies I like as a core. So outside of um, an index fund, I'll, I'll kind of draw this out. So like the way I would see this is, you know, I've got my index fund. That's always going to be my base. And above that, I'm, I have five stocks around it that I think are going to be very, very good for the beginner investor to have. The reason why I've selected these stocks is not only because they have performed well, they're a solid company, they've got some financials behind them, but it's also because these are companies that you understand. Okay. I think that's the big, the biggest thing um, that most people need to, to understand about it is that you want to have something you understand. The reason why I say that is because if you don't understand the company, you're not going to know when to sell. You're not going to know when there's an emergency or something to say, look, I'm not sure I want to be in this company anymore. Um, try to think of a, a good example. Uh, let's say like one of the chip makers, NVIDIA, or one of the um, the newer companies like C3 AI, um, that, that IPO last year, or Snowflake, um, a company that I jumped into that was that IPO. I'm still in it. I ain't making money on it, but I didn't expect it within the first year. But these are like tech companies that are hard to say like what they actually do, right? Applied Materials, I think that's a good company. But I even had to read the, the I'm looking for my phone. Um, I even had to, to read the description of what they do like once or twice. Thermo Fisher, they were a, sci a science company. Again, I'm not a science person. I can learn, right? But like, that's not something I readily understand to say like, this is why I'm investing in it. Um, this is what I know about the industry. I worked in banking. I think most of us understand the majority of banks, or at least like the, the base level. So it's something that, you know, I have an inside track on, but not everybody does. So I just to, to give you an example, I'm going to read the description for Applied Materials, just to give you an example of a company that, you know, I think is performing fine, right? I think it's it's a decent, a, a decent to good investment, but like, does everybody really understand what it means? So Applied Materials engages in the provision of materials engineering solutions used to produce new chip and advanced display. It operates under the following segment, semiconductor, applied materials, services, and display in adjacent markets. The semiconductor, <laughs> oh, I haven't lost earlier yet. yet uh, the semiconductor system segment Includes semiconductor capital equipment for the dep deposition, etch, ion, implantation, rapid thermal processing, chemical, mechanical, planarization, meteorology, inspection, and uh, wafer level pack. I don't know what that is. I don't. I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> and I'm. You can read it for yourself on public, like. That's, that's their description, all of that, right? Now, I know semiconductors. I know that's a, a popping place to be. Micron, apparently Applied Materials, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, and others. But, like, I understand NVIDIA. I know exactly what they do. They make chips for um, my brother-in-law to play video games on his computer, right? They do other stuff, too. They do a bunch of other stuff. Um, and semiconductors are important. But, like, all of that, I'm not saying that you shouldn't invest in it. I think, again, it's a decent company. But... I don't understand it, right? Not in the same way. So these are five companies that we can all understand, right? And and build your portfolio around. So I'll give you these five. I'm gonna share the screen real quick. So we're working with, uh, you know, trying to trying to do better, trying to do better with uh, with video and stuff. All right. So here we go. Here is uh, I'm kind of y'all know I'm not an artist. Well, some of y'all know I'm not an artist. Some of y'all don't. It's gonna be your first time. So deal with it. All right. So again, I'm, you know, I'm looking at, at a core position, right? So I think everybody, which I have a ton of index funds too, I think everybody should have an index fund, which one you use, totally up to you. My favorite, uh, I'm not gonna do my favorite one today, which is ITOT, but you can do SPY. They 
almost all do the exact same things, okay? Uh, so this is my core position. This is like, no matter what I do on the outside, I'm always putting money inside of my, my index fund. If I don't do nothing else, I can stay here. I don't have to do anything else, but if I want to, I can, okay? So if you want to, you want to try to do a little bit better from time to time, these are some stocks I think can help you do that. Um, again, mm, I'm thinking that maybe I can draw a star or something. I don't know what to draw. Um, so I think the first one, I'll, I'll talk about the risk and benefits of, of all of these. Okay, Amazon is it, not going anywhere. We know that the online shopping business is going to be there, but they've also got the streaming service. They've got the cloud service and, all, and everything in between. Okay, so, and they also just acquired MGM uh, for some of their content purposes. I don't think they're going anywhere. I I don't think that's a that's a, uh, a hot take either, <laughs> but I think for something that, yeah, and they did, did just switch CEO, so that's the risk there. But like, they're not going anywhere. They're, they're just not. You know what, what the business is. I know what the business is. I don't think I need to convince anybody of anything in this space. Amazon is what you need to have or what I think you should have if you are a beginner looking to kind of branch off into the stock market. There you go. Um, another one is Disney. Now, I've got Disney. And Disney has not um, not performed super great over, over this year, right? It, it's been a little like meh, right? Um, subscriber numbers are kind of kind of tampering down a bit, but I still think they have some room to grow. You know what Disney is outside of Disney Plus. I think Disney Plus is the most attractive space, but as a sports fan, there's also ESPN, there's also ABC and Star Wars and Marvel, and the list goes on. So the benefits here are at some point, right, even though I think Disney Plus is still the way to go, at some point, people are going to go back to theaters in some way. Um, People are kind of moving back to the theme parks. They own that too. You're going to see that a lot more. Not Maybe not so much in 2021, but 2022, 2023, and beyond. So they still have a good place there. Also, the college football playoffs, I'm a huge college football fan. College football playoffs is going to expand, I think in 2023, from four teams to like 12. That's going to be huge for television contracts and revenue that they can bring in. So again, Another good thing for Disney down the line, it's not really taking place right now. But I think Disney has, again, a lot of space to grow. We'll see what happens with Disney+. Plus. The concern there is that everybody already has it. So now we all have it. Where are you going now? So that's the concern there. Uh, but I think they're going to figure it out. The good thing, too, is that their content, there was a, uh, I want to say it was LA Times, don't quote me on that, that they did a, a rating of, like, how good are the movies and things that we watch? And People, everybody pretty much said that everything was trash except for the stuff on Disney Plus because they are really, really great storytellers. So the product is good, is well known. You understand the company. Um, I don't have the performance numbers because I just threw my phone. Uh, but last year they did incredibly well. This year they're kind of meh, but I think they have the potential to do well perhaps the rest of this year, but definitely into the next two years or so. So hopefully that is still going to be the case. But again, it's a company you understand. You can do your research and see if you want to add that one or not. Okay. And then we've got one that needs no explanation. That's Microsoft. It's the OG of technology. They come out with Windows, what, like 11. They've, they've won all these government contracts. They gone, They ain't been nowhere, right, since like the 80s. Um, they did have a rough stretch, I think in like the 90s or so, maybe the early 2000s. But since then... They've been real nice. They were real nice to me and real nice to everybody else. Um, I don't know people who are complaining about Microsoft. Again, they've been here. They're going to be here. They're not going nowhere. Uh, so I think Microsoft is, is one that you really should have, um, especially if you're looking to make money. But it's something that's, that you can relax and say, look, I, I know what this is. It's the tablets that I'm recording this on, sort of, that I'm writing on. I'll say that. It's, it's the tablets, it's Bing. Yeah, I know everybody doesn't like Bing, but it's that. It's also LinkedIn, they own that as well. Then you got their cloud service and all the stuff that comes with that. Um, so again, they're gonna be here, they're not going nowhere, it's Microsoft. Um, the next one that I would look into, and this is number four, is Costco. 
Now, the reason why I'm adding Costco, I have a few reasons here. Again, these are all companies that you understand, but Costco had a really, really good year last year for their standards. Also, the way I'm looking at it, these, these are a little bit diversified. You've got two in tech, right? You've got one in the consumer space or two technically in the consumer space. One you have to have, you got to get groceries. And then one is discretionary. You don't have to have Disney Plus. You don't have to go to Disneyland, but you can if you want to. So you kind of have a, a good, somewhat of a good mix of like, I got my tech, I've got my, my other places that people have to go to and people that want to splurge. So you've got both of those. Uh, another case for Disney, as travel continues to pick up, Disney might benefit there too. Uh, but going back to Costco, one, it's an essential business. They had a great year last year. It was so good. They paid their employees more, which I really like. And they paid a special dividend. So we all won. Employees got paid more. Shareholders got paid more. Perfect, right? Um, but the other thing about Costco is that, as we all know, they make most of their money on their subscription service um, or their membership fees. The good thing about Costco and the reason why people, when they get into Costco, they don't go nowhere. They get Costco and they stay there. They don't just up and leave like a bunch of other subscription services. Um, but the good thing is as, as we're relaxing mandates and we're getting more vaccinated and all kinds of stuff, people are going to go back into the stores. The reason why they loved it was the experience of meatballs or whatever is in Costco. I've actually never been to Costco. Um, but the, the, the experience of it is what keeps people there. I think they retain, um, I did a video on it. I don't know if it was 70 or 80% of the people um, that sign up for Costco stay. Um, so as things continue to grow, they're going to be very solid. But the thing I like the most is that they they pretty much got the U.S. covered, but they're expanding internationally. And that's the big player. They have places to grow. For example, like a, um, like a Starbucks or maybe even a, I was going to say Microsoft, but McDonald's, you got one on every corner already. Like you're going to make whatever money you're going to make in the U.S., What's next? Where can you go to, right? And I know McDonald's is already kind of global, right? But Costco is not, and they're starting to. So now I think Costco is still a very good place to be. Now you're not going to see, you know, Amazon or Microsoft level returns with a Costco. So don't expect that. But I think, again, it's a very good piece to have to diversify a bit. I don't want all these stocks for for disclosure purposes. I don't have this one on public. I have in a few other accounts. Um, but I think, I mean, man, it's, it's really, really good, <laughs> um, and it's it's solid. You understand that. They most people understand it, and they have a, a, a lot of room to grow. Now, the last company, maybe I should have stuck with four. I wasn't really sure where to put it on this wheel, uh, so it's going to be awkwardly placed here. But I think it's, it's good that it is awkwardly placed here. Now, you can do a few things. So technically, I'm giving you six. I'm giving you one for free. You can do Ford, or you can do Nike. Now, it depends on which one you like. Um, I'll give you the case for, for both. Obviously, you already understand both of these. For as a car company, you've got Nike as a, as a shoe company. Um, now, I did sell Nike, full disclosure. Um, the last six months hasn't been all that great, but long-term, they've been very, very good. If you're looking to hold something for the next, I would say, two, three, four years, I think Nike is going to be fine. If you're looking to do something and you may want to change things around December, I probably wouldn't do Nike. That's just me. Okay, That's just me. Um, I think you will make more money in either case, three years from now or six months from now, I think Ford is going to be the one that's, that's going to be there. We're seeing a huge push from the infrastructure bill to just the way the environment is moving and just the way that we're moving culturally and industrially, we're moving to electric vehicles. Tesla is going to be a big player. Ford might be the one that's next. It saw a 117% increase in electric vehicle sales. The other thing too is that the entire automotive industry is kind of suppressed and isn't able to make as many cars because of the semiconductor shortage. Why is that a thing? The remote to your car, automatic start, the systems and stuff in your car, all that stuff is more high tech, so you're going to need that. Um, but here's the thing that I like the most, my, a higher a economic case for it. We've seen how many people have, have bought homes and there's a housing shortage. I know the hard things, the uh, unfortunate side of things where I'm trying to like buy a house and people are bidding thirty and $40,000 over what the house is worth. That's wild to you, boy. Um, but aside from that, with everybody moving virtually and some companies are going to stay there, my job is only going in twice a week. 
Um, but it required me to buy a car, right? Because now I'm living in the suburbs. I'm not in New York anymore. And people are moving out of these larger cities and working remotely. So yes, it is true that I might not need a car. I can just Uber everywhere because I'm working remotely. But it's also true that if I want to take the kids on a ride, if I want to go to the grocery store when I feel like it, all of these things, you are going to need a car to do that. And Ford might be the one outside of Tesla that is going to be the most affordable, broader, broadest market play from the stock market perspective where you can jump into. Ford is not playing any games no more. They've got a new CEO that I think was installed in October, October 2020, and he is coming after Tesla. Now, will he, will he beat Tesla? Will he, will he win? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that. I'm not going to go that far. Um, but... As we know, Tesla's kind of got the, the higher end segment. Somebody's got to make cars for the everyday person, the everyday family, right? And Ford might be that one. Um, so you also got General Motors. You can throw them in there too if you want, but I'm picking four of the two. So these are my five and a half, you want to count Nike, uh, companies that I think you should build your portfolio around if you are a new investor. Um, you got Amazon, Disney, Ford, Microsoft, and Costco. I think all of them provide some things for you for long-term growth, as well as um, short-term growth too. If you want to, you want to go there. But I think this is this is where you want to be, including the index fund that we had in the middle. All right. So before we close, I do want to tell you right now that right under this video, whether it's Instagram or or YouTube, there is a link for a class. I want to show you how to build your six-figure investing plan. Click the link. Sign up for a time. We're going to chat together. You and whoever else signs up is usually a few hundred people. I do this class almost every day, but it's incredibly important for you to sign up um, so I can teach you how to start investing and how to hit that six-figure number. Because once you hit 100000 in your investing account, and it may take a while, it took me like six years to do it, uh, once you do everything changes. And I mean everything. So if you already got six figures, you definitely want to sign up. Um, if you haven't got six figures yet, but you want to, make sure that you hit the link below to make sure you sign up. All right. Now that is it for me. Like, subscribe, do all those things because it helps us, that helps the entire channel to grow and produce more stuff. All right. Talk to you guys later.